chicken coops. Ask a hundred chicken keepers if they could have one do-over, one thing that they started out with that they could undo and redo with what they know now, and the vast majority of them will respond, change that coop. Yeah, I'm in that group. You see, the problem is you need a coop in place before you bring the chickens home, before you ever collect eggs, clean up poop, feed and water, have a major downpour, or endure a long snowy winter. Only after going through these things do we come to understand that the coop we have isn't the coop we want or that our chickens need. So today, we're going to share the top 10 do's and don'ts of chicken coops. Things you should and should not do when buying or building a coop. We're the Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Brian. That's Steve, and our pal Eric is working hard behind the scenes today. Don't go away. Do's and don'ts of chicken coops, up next. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Whether you're looking to purchase or looking to build, there are a few things to consider as you plan and construct your chicken coop. So let's get right into the do's and don'ts of chicken coops. And the first thing is, do check if there are permits required or local chicken laws and ordinances. Before beginning, find out if there are restrictions on keeping chickens or on building a structure. Generally, a small coop will be allowed without the need for special permits, but bigger coops may require a permit before you can legally build it. And check local laws and restrictions regarding the location of the coop. Many locations have very specific codes in place that restrict where you can place your coop. For example, no closer than 20 feet from your property's boundary. Find out before you build so you aren't forced to tear it down and move once you get a new neighbor or the wrong person sees it. And that leads us into our first don't. Don't neglect to carefully consider the location of the coop. Beyond any legal restrictions, there are many other things to consider when determining where to place your coop. Where do you get sun? How about shade? Is your climate hot or cold? Cooler climates with long, cold winters may opt for a sunny location to take advantage of solar heat. Those living in hot, humid areas may appreciate a bit of afternoon shade. Right. And how about wind? Also, if you get lots of moisture, your coop and run can end up a muddy mess, or a full-on lake if located in a low area or somewhere that gets runoff from a neighboring structure's roof line. How close are you to power or a water source? Convenience should factor into where you put your coop, but so too should considerations like noise and smell. Having that coop close to your house is great until your rooster starts crowing at 3 a.m. Oh, and heads up, they don't crow once or twice. They crow until they are sure you and everyone else in the house is wide awake and craving fried chicken. And nothing can spoil your picnic on the back porch quicker than realizing you're downwind from a coop that needs to be cleaned out. Next up, do overestimate space requirements. Trying to figure out how big the coop needs to be can be challenging especially when you're standing there looking at all those cute chicks and deciding you want at least two of each. <laughs> Flock size will be a primary factor in coop size, but so too will things like which breed you go with and the size and ability of a run or free ranging opportunities and what type of weather you get. Three to four square feet per bird is a pretty general recommendation for coop floor space for standard sized birds. But that presupposes that the chickens also have access to a large run or outdoor space. If not, or if weather or work schedules frequently result in the birds staying in the coop for long periods, those numbers may go from 3 to 4 to 5 to 10 or more square feet per bird. Also, plan on 8 to 12 inches of roost space per bird and at least one nesting box for every 3 to 4 hens. Chickens, like people, have personal space bubbles. And just like people, some have big bubbles and some have smaller bubbles. Breed will play a role here, but you'll find individual chickens have their own personalities as well. And flock dynamics and pecking order come into play. You may find chicken A is fine with chicken B being next to her all day long, but can't abide being anywhere near chicken C. It's a little junior high in there some days. Having adequate space helps minimize stress, goes a long way in preventing bad behaviors, and results in a cleaner coop and healthier chickens. One last thing to consider. While you may be planning on starting with four birds to see how it goes, what happens when you fall in love with the chickens and bring home a dozen new chicks next spring? Maybe plan a little extra room. Next up, don't forget to address ventilation. This is a big one that many new chicken keepers and some experienced ones have trouble grasping. We want to seal that coop up tight and keep the chickens warm with all that warm air in there. But we end up doing more harm than good. Coops need ventilation. 
you need to make sure that there's proper airflow within the coop without making it drafty. Chickens stir up plenty of dust, flapping and scratching around. You want to be able to keep the air fresh to protect their lungs. Moisture also collects in the coop, especially in the winter and the humid air needs to be refreshed with fresh air to keep everyone healthy and avoid problems that result from excess moisture in that coop. Remember though that there is a difference between having a well ventilated coop and a drafty coop. Ventilated is good, drafty is not. Make sure that ventilation openings are covered with hardware cloth to keep predators and vermin out. Which leads us to our next topic. Do ensure your coop will be predator free. We have both lost chickens to predators who manage to defeat our defenses and get into our coops. They can be both strong and crafty, so your coop defenses have to be stronger and craftier. Unsecured doors, windows, and openings leave your chickens vulnerable. Seal or cover openings with half-inch hardware cloth, digging under or climbing over a fence and into a run or other potential entry points. A solid floor can prevent tunneling into your coop, as can burying hardware cloth beneath the coop. I use a cement floor and it works great, but it costs more and takes a little more work up front to install. Another option is to raise the coop off the ground. That eliminates tunneling in as a means of entry. Knowing what predators you're dealing with helps determine what defenses your coop requires. Fending off martens or weasels looks different than guarding against coyotes or bears. Whatever your predator, locating the coop in the open, away from cover, and with a yard or motion light can be an effective first step, no matter what the predator. Next, don't forget to have a plan for power. I know many of us end up with coops in locations where we don't have access to power, but as someone who made that mistake, let me assure you, this is a mistake you don't want to make. If you're in a temperate climate, maybe you'll be okay. If you live like we do, where it gets very cold for a very long time, make a plan to have power available at your coop. Yeah, I can second that. Dealing with frozen water all winter gets old quickly. Also, with the shortened daylight hours and a full-time job, I often end up tending to the chickens in the dark. Having a light out in the coop is useful for my own benefit, plus it gives me the option of keeping a light on on the birds to keep egg production up. Not to mention being able to add security lights or an automatic door. Whether you opt to run a line, install a solar panel, or hook to a battery, you'll be grateful for power at your coop. Also, don't forget about providing a dust bathing area. Why is that part of the coop discussion? I, I mean, my chickens dust bathe in the yard, the flower garden, even the wife's potted plants on the deck all summer long. Why plant for a dust bathing area in the coop then? If you listen carefully, you'll realize that Steve answered his own question. Problems with chicken mites and lice are far more likely in the winter when the dust bathing areas the chickens have used all spring, summer, and fall are frozen solid or covered in several inches of snow. For me, inside the coop is the only place I can set up a dust bathing area for the chickens in the winter that doesn't become a frozen tundra overnight. Right. This may not be an issue for you, but as many of our viewers live in cold areas, would you believe some are even colder than us? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at you, Canada. Uh, we thought it worth mentioning. This is another thing to take into account as you plan for the size of your coop. Do you need some extra floor space to provide a dust bath area so your chickens can combat vice and mice in the winter when they don't have anywhere else to dust bathe? Next, do have a plan for feed. Chickens can be notoriously messy with their feed. Not only is feed all over the floor a waste of money, it invites mice and other rodents that can cause problems or bring disease. Keep feed off the floor at about the height of the chicken's back. Also, store extra feed in secure, sealable containers to keep the mice out. Also, don't forget to plan for chicken poop and needed cleaning. One thing that you'll come to note is a chicken's poop. A lot. They poop even while they're sleeping, which means you'll end up with an amazing amounts of this stuff beneath your roosts. So plan accordingly. Do you have a way to easily clean the poop and mess? Periodically, you'll want to replace bedding materials. I use the deep litter method and do two deep cleans a year, once in the spring and again in the fall. Have a plan for taking care of poop and litter. Access doors or areas large enough to work a shovel can be planned into the design. Maybe even a door wide enough for a wheelbarrow or a tractor if your coop is large enough. The point being, the coop will need to be cleaned. Make it as easy as you can. And finally, number 10 on our list of do's and don'ts for chicken coops is, do make it your own. Let your creative side show. The coop should be a reflection of your personality and your style. Want drapes? Do it. Have some fun signs you want to hang up? Hang them. 
Yeah, whether it's landscaping around the outside of your coop or hanging a chandelier inside your coop, do what makes you happy. If you make the space your own, a fun and enjoyable space, you'll spend more time there and hence more time with your chickens. So plan for where to put it, plan for predators, ventilation, power, all that stuff. But then make it coop for your chickens and have an absolute blast doing it. Tell us about your coops and your biggest do's or don'ts in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you guys as well. Well, that wraps up our 10 do's and don'ts for chicken coops. But before you go, we do hope you'll give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And do give hardworking, underappreciated Eric some love in the comments. <laughs> and don't forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on more great videos from the Hobby Farm guys. Till next time, keep on hobby farming.